Lady Beals back. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Virginia, Ms. McClellan, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, uh, for planning this hearing, which, as we've heard, is very timely, uh, given the experiences we had recently with the wildfires. And while we have some familiarity with wildfires in Virginia, uh, I don't think we have ever had smoke travel from Canada before, or at least not in, in my recent memory. Um, and, and we know that, that as we continue uh, the air quality impacts uh, that we saw that were historic and unprecedented are probably going to be much more prevalent going forward. And as we've touched on, but I want to explore a little bit deeper, um, you know, I'm concerned we're going to continue to see increasingly severe wildfire years uh, as a result of climate change, which is exacerbating heat and drought conditions and, and making it much easier for uh, fires to catch and spread. Um, so Dr. Tahiti, could you describe in a little more, you know, specifically uh, the ways in which climate change has impacted fire dynamics? Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, um, yeah. the climate change effects um, uh, 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 and the way they are uh, affecting the fire dynamics or the regime of fires that we see these days uh, is a confluence of a lot of different parameters. But the general consensus is that uh, the climate change uh, leads to prolonged droughts, uh, 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 warmer uh, and hotter temperatures, and that leads to uh, drier fuels and lowers the fuel uh, moisture content in our uh, uh, landscape, and uh, really uh, builds up the platform uh, for uh, uh, any ignition with any source uh, that can happen, and then it uh, goes from a, a single ignition point to uh, large weather, uh, fire weather systems that we have these days. Uh, so these are uh, uh, the main um, uh, you know, factors that uh, we all know and uh, there are evidence for us. Another uh, um, factor that climate change uh, uh, makes an impact on is the soil moisture. Uh, soil moisture is also known to be a very important parameter in uh, the health of the uh, biological systems that we have throughout the landscape and also uh, uh, having some correlations uh, with uh, the fuel moisture and uh, how uh, the fire dynamics changes. Uh, thank you for that. And do you see any updates to data collection or modeling needed to account for these changes, or do you think the modeling is okay as is? Uh, the modeling, uh, uh, we do uh, need to do a lot more uh, in modeling uh, perspective, and uh, one of the uh, avenues that we can improve the current state of the models is exactly that. We need to address the quality resolution and uh, frequency of the data layers for these uh, current models that we have. We do need to better understand the dynamics of the fire at different scales. Um, uh, as you know, uh, fire happens uh, uh, to be a, a multi-scale uh, process, starting with uh, flame at a very small scales, and then how it grows to be a uh, large weather system such as pyro CBs, uh, we still have a lot to learn and uh, uh, fill that knowledge gap. Um, so, uh, yeah. Thank you, and uh, touching on community resiliency a little bit, Mr. Goler, um, could you discuss steps that Congress could take to better support vulnerable communities and anticipating wildfire scenarios and preparing mitigations? It's one of the things that we can do. One, the vulnerable communities is uh, the hazard mitigation, removing fuel. We, we've talked about climate change and the effects of climate change. One thing we can do to reduce the severity and impact of wildfires and how much smoke is generated and how much particulate matter is to remove fuel. And right now, our fuel buildup in the forested areas of the United States and, and uh, in the rangeland areas where management has been largely reduced over the years, there's a number of reasons for that. There's cultural changes, there's changes in the, the, the demographics. The family farms aren't as prevalent as they used to be. We've got people moving into the city areas and, and therefore a lot of land is relatively unmanaged and left alone just to grow and produce fuel, whether it be the rangelands or the forest lands of the United States. And the communities that are out in and amongst those areas, the hazard mitigation work that can occur is, is critical to protect those communities from the impacts, not only from a fire directly impacting or directly impinging into those areas, uh, but also to limit the the smoke generated from the, any, any wildfires in the areas that would um, 
cause them to have, have issues with that. And so addressing the one component in the fire environment that we do have the wherewithal to do is, is working on fuel reduction work and doing that ahead in advance of fire occurrence. Thank you, I yield back. Gentlelady yields back, the chair, next.